for millennia, there were herds of large herbivores that would graze the lands. Because of the predators that existed, they would be tightly bunched and regularly moving, and their urine and dung would fertilize the land. And those animals would move on, and they'd go to new pastures and new pieces of land. And eventually, once those grasses and roots had fully regrown, those animals would come back to it. And so there were these general migratory patterns that used to exist. And that's essentially what we can do with agriculture. We can mimic that. belt didn't get there by growing acres and acres of kale. It got there from roaming bison fertilizing that land. That's how we got three feet of topsoil in the wheat belt, and that's how we're going to get it back. Grasslands represent five billion hectares of land on this planet. That's one third of the Earth's terrestrial surface. So one third of the Earth's terrestrial surface can only be stewarded by grazing animals. That turns that grass into calories, the animal, that we can then eat. You know, when you look back to the evolution of humans, there's a compelling argument that what allowed us to evolve as Homo sapiens was the advent of fire. And what the advent of fire did, it allowed us to get more nutrition and more nutrient density that was more bioavailable, which allowed our brains to expand, which allowed us to become more intelligent, which allowed us to be able to use tools and develop language and develop communities. And ultimately, we developed agriculture around 10,000 years ago. But really, what allowed us to do all of that was the nutrition that came from these animal products. And we continue to need that. There's this premise that we can't feed the world with proper land management. And that's absolutely not true. The reality is we can't feed the world with the way that we're doing things currently with food production either. The UN FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, they came out with a report, I want to say it was two years ago, that said we have 60 harvests left. That's 60 years of food production before we can no longer make food anymore at our current rate of soil erosion. That is an absolutely terrifying thing. That's not some big idea that's, you know, millennia away. That's something that we will experience, maybe not in my lifetime, but my children's lifetime. We have to do something about that. If we want the human species to continue on this planet, we need to do something about our mismanagement of our lands and our soils, because that's the only thing that's letting us hold on. For a long time, we've lived with this agricultural paradigm where we extract value from the ecosystem and we take out and we take out and we take out. We eventually got to this place of sustainability and talking about sustainable agriculture. And so let's maintain the status quo of the system that we're in. But I think what we've realized is the way that climate change is affecting this planet and we're losing biodiversity and our natural resources is that sustainability is not enough. We need to actually put more back into the system than we're taking out. So it's putting more carbon back in the soil it's putting more life back in the soil and into the ecosystem, storing more water underground and recharging underground aquifers. And it even expands beyond the ecology piece. Agriculture should also focus on the people and the financial aspects as well. So there's the ecological piece, but there's also the economic and the social. And so in terms of food production, uh, in terms of wildlife habitat, 
in terms of carbon sequestration, there's this, this vast potential and the only way to do that is through animal impact. People are using numbers to argue that animal agriculture is not scalable. So much of those numbers that are often quoted come from the amount of land that is being used to grow the feed that's being fed to animals that are in feedlots. I mean, here we are at this land. In five years, they've doubled or tripled their carrying capacity through proper land management. So by the way that they manage their cattle, they're growing more grass. And when you grow more grass, you can raise more animals. When you raise more animals, you produce more food, you make more money, you help the rural economies, you help the habitat, you sequester more carbon. All of that comes, it flourishes, you get this abundance that happens. And so if we were to put animals back out to pasture and we improve the management of those lands so that we can carry more animals on those lands, ultimately we've got five billion hectares of grasslands globally. We can feed the world doing this. So we have to scale this up in a big way and the only way to do that is going to be through big business that can influence this type of change. There's lots of us at the ground level that are trying to change minds and influence behavior, but those who wield lots of power and can command change in these supply chains have a tremendous opportunity to turn back the clock on climate change and the loss of our natural resources and to give us hope for the future. And it's the only thing that's gonna be able to get us there.